So let's take a look at problem number one. It says, translate the following statements given in function notation into ordered pairs and then plot them on the graph prov provided. So we've got function notation, we have ordered pairs, and we have the graph. So the first one says f of negative 1 equals 1. So just a reminder here oh, that this is f of x. So f of x means that negative 1 is our x. And then the whole expression f of x is the y value. Remember, in terms of order pairs, it goes in alphabetical order, x first, y second. So as we take a look at letter B, f of 2, the 2 is the x, and the 7 is the y. f of 1 equals negative 1 on problem C, 1 is the x, and negative 1 is the y, and f of 3 equals 0, 3 is the x, and 0 is the y value. So there's our ordered pairs. We, we took the function notation, we converted it to ordered pairs, and now we're going to graph. So negative 1, 1. We're going to go from 0, we're going to go left 1 and up 1. 2, 7. We're going to go from 0, 2 to the right and up 7. And my graph is a little skewed. I hope yours is better. We went 2 to the right and up 7. 1, negative 1. So we're going to go 1 to the right, counting from 0. And then down 1, negative. It's going to go down 1. And finally, 3, 0. We're going to go 3 spaces right and 0 spaces up. We're, we started by counting from 0. And how do we know that this set of ordered pairs represents a function? Well, what we can say is that it passes the vertical line test. which I sometimes abbreviate as VLT for vertical line test. If we take a look at problem number two here, this time we're given the equation of a line. And when we're given the equation of the line, f of x equals 3x plus 2, it says fill in the table and sketch a graph. You may use your calculator to help. So what we're going to do is we're going to take, first of all, negative 3, and we're going to put that back into the equation. We're going to do 3 times negative 3, putting the x value of negative 3 back in. We're replacing x with that value of negative 3 plus 2. And if you use your calculator or you use decimals for that matter, we end up with negative 7. We're going to do the same thing with negative 2. 3 times negative 2. Negative 2 is replacing the x plus 2 gives us negative 4. Again, 3 times negative 1 plus 2 is negative 1. 3 times 0 plus 2. And 3 times 1 plus 2. So we filled in the table. And now we're going to sketch that graph. So once again, negative 3, negative 7. So we're going to go 3 spaces left from 0 and down 7. Negative 2, 2 spaces left and 4 down. Negative 1, 1 space left and 1 space down. 0, 2, and 1, 5. Oops, almost missed it. And actually what that looks like when we graph that, and my line will not be that straight, better than expected, but there is the picture, and it says, how do I know that this represents a function? Well, it's the same reason. I'm going to abbreviate. Mm, I'll change my mind. Passes the vertical line test. I don't like to abbreviate very much because 
if English is a second language for people, it's hard to understand sometimes. But again, I'll write that. It passes the VLT. Um, I am gonna um, switch up here my pen color for a moment and um, just show you here how the vertical line test works. Don't do this to your paper. It'll be confusing afterwards. And it's gonna look a little bit confusing here on mine. But what the vertical line test says is, is that you can draw any vertical line on this graph and any vertical line never touches the graph more than once. So if I start drawing these yellow lines here, I can draw as many vertical lines as I want, but any of those vertical lines never touch that purple line more than once. And that's what it means to pass the vertical line test. But if we continue on, there's more to this problem because it's the same function, f of x equals 3x plus 2. It says, evaluate f of 2. So once again, remember that f of 2, that's f of x. So that means that the 2 is going to go back into this equation. I'm going to change colors here for a minute. Going to go back into the equation wherever we see x. So we're putting that 2 back into the equation. And when we figure that out, 3 times 2 is 6 plus 2. So f of 2 equals 8. And then again, remember, f of 2, the 2 is the x value. And then what we found when we put the 2 in is we came up with 8. When we look at letter C, watch out here. Because what it says is it says f of x equals negative 10. And I put the equation in, in a little bit different place here just to keep track of it. So if you're taking notes, you might want to write that equation down again so that you can put it in, put the value in exactly. It says, find the value of x that makes f of x equals negative 10. So if we fill this in here, I'm going to turn my highlighter back on for just a moment and make this a little bit darker. So f of x is here and there f of x is here in the equation so when we go to fill that in then what's going to happen is that the negative 10 is going in this spot in the equation to figure out our x so we have to actually solve the equation and now what we're going to do is we're going to subtract 2 from both sides. And by the way, I think Ms. Aldrich does something like this. So when we do that, we get negative 12 equals 3x. And then when we divide both sides by 3, we get x equals negative 4. And again, so here... It says, find the value of x that makes f of x equal negative 10 true. So x equals negative 4. And then when we fill that into our ordered pair here, x is negative 4. And then we get the negative 10.